In this video, we're going to be showing you how to use the NeuroBind model to design protein-based binders against PDL1, which is a therapeutically very important protein, uh, directly on the Neurosnap platform. For those of you who aren't aware, Neurosnap is a website that provides access to various computational biology tools, and NeuroBind is actually a model that we developed in-house for designing protein-based binders against arbitrary types of targets, including monomers, as well as multimers and complexes. So the advantage of NeuroBind compared to some of the other models that achieve this, such as RF diffusion or RF antibody or Bindcraft, is that NeuroBind directly optimizes for properties that are associated with developability. So for instance, NeuroBind optimizes solubility as well as reduces aggregation while still producing high affinity antibodies. Moreover, some of the other properties that NeuroBind optimizes for include uh, stability and even to a certain degree immunogenicity for antibodies and SCFEs. Now, in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to enter the target sequence. So in our case, we're going to be targeting PDL1, and we can go and fetch that sequence from, say, something like Uniprot. I've actually already opened up the Uniprot page. And for our run, what we're going to do is we're going to enter a truncated version of the protein. So for instance, if you look at a lot of the PDB entries of this protein, you'll notice that they don't include the termini, whereas if we were to get a structure of the full structure, uh, we'd see that it include like these extraneous regions that we don't really want to target for our particular use case. Now, this is an optional step, but what we're going to do is we're going to enter a truncated sequence to more closely resemble what we see in the PDB. Now, after we've entered the amino acid sequence, we have a couple different options that we can explore. In our case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be designing uh, using a DARPEN. So this particular mode is going to be ignored, but if you'd like, we have nanobody mode, antibody, SCFE, and peptide modes already built in. So if you can, you can just automatically design those without having to supply a template. Now, these options are also applicable, but in our case, we don't really need to use them. So we can just skip to the hotspots. Hotspots is similar to RF diffusion, where essentially you can, if you would like, you can specify particular regions where you want the model to form an interface on the target. So these can be used to guide the design process, and if you're already familiar with a particular region that you think is worth targeting, then this could be an excellent way to do so. But in our case, it's not really necessary, so we're just going to go ahead and skip that. Now the next thing we have is the custom template. In our case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uploading this template DARPEN uh, 500U from the PDB. And then what we can do is we can just upload the structure over here. So I already have the structure downloaded. I can just enter it and we're good to go. And optionally, if you enter a, you know, a template structure, then, sorry, a template structure, you can also specify paratopes. So you can specify the chain followed by the particular amino acid positions. And this will also help guide the model if, uh, you know, if you deem it necessary. But this is an optional step as well. Additionally, if you have an antibody or any kind of binder actually that you already knows interact that you already know interacts with your target, what you can do is you can upload it over here, and the model will automatically perform affinity maturation to try and help you get um, you know candidates or variants of your original input protein with higher uh, with higher developability metrics as well as greater affinity for your target. So now what we're going to do is normally we just hit the run job button and we'd let everything run on the platform. But in our case, I've actually ran the model ahead of time and we're just going to go through the results uh, right away since the model takes a little bit longer than some of the other tools that we have available. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and get started with the actual structures. Now, the first structure that we're going to be looking at is the rank one structure. So this is the structure that is predicted to be overall the best by Neurobine. And we can see all the different rank structures over here on this table. So Neurobind by default outputs 25 structures. We can see them over here. And the best part is we also get various metrics that can help us decide which ones we actually want to take to uh, a wet lab setting or an experimental setting. Overall quality is the most important metric in most cases, as it gives us an estimation on all the different properties. And it represents the overall quality as the name entails for that candidate. The next one is going to be affinity. So this is a predicted affinity value in uh, kilocals per mole. And next up is thermostability and solubility, which are predicted between 0 and 1, where higher is generally uh, more favorable. Additionally, we also have a hydrogen bond prediction. So this is based off of an algorithm that we use. It's a little bit more on the strict side. But if you use something like PyMol or another tool, you might get a slightly higher or lower number just because there are different ways of calculating hydrogen bonds and different cutoffs that you could use. Additionally, we have the sequence available over here. So if you want to copy that and take that to another tool or uh, you know, verify it further with, say, AlphaFold 3 or something else, then you can go ahead and do that very easily. 
Now, if we want to switch between the structures, over here is rank one. What we can do is we can actually switch over to like rank two or one of, or any of the other uh, candidates as well. Moreover, we have various options for visualizing and like changing the representation. So this is a cartoon representation. But if you want to switch over to the molecular surface, then we can just select that button and we can actually just access that directly. Um, the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at the binders, uh, which are going to be clustered by structural similarity. Now, what this scatter plot represents is we compare all the structures against each other, and we essentially project how similar they're going to be using UMAP. Now, in this particular run, it seems that we have three different groups of structures for this orange cluster slash yellow cluster over here. All these structures are going to be somewhat similar, and after the blue and green ones are going to be more similar to one another uh, comparatively. So this could be very useful in case you want to, you know, take a look at some of the structural variability in the actual designs that were outputted by this model. And that wraps up our walkthrough of Neurobine. Before we go, it's important to mention that while Neurobine is incredibly powerful, like many machine learning models, including AlphaFold 3, RF Diffusion, and Minecraft, it doesn't guarantee success for every candidate. These tools are fundamentally just complex statistical models, and while they are impressive, they aren't infallible. And that's why we strongly recommend always paying close attention to the output metrics from Neurosnap and similar platforms, as they help reduce the risks of false positives and can guide you toward more confident decisions. Neurosnap also offers a suite of complementary tools to validate and stress test your designs ahead of time. One approach that we suggest is running a molecular dynamic simulation using a Gromax integration. It's a great way to assess the physical realism of your complex, and you can also refold the structure using Bold2 or AlphaFold2 directly within Neurosnap to double check any structural consistency. These extra steps can make a big difference in downstream success, which is why we really recommend at least doing one or two. We also hope that this demo gave you a solid feel for what Neurobind can do, and if you have any questions, suggestions, or if you just want to nerd out about proteins, just drop a comment below and we'll probably get back to you. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we see you in the next one.